Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 2, if you have it, would you say amen? amen? Let's read together, verses 1 through 12. I may drop out, but we'll read in concert. Amen? amen. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together. took up the bed and went forth before them, and so much that they were all amazed, glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this. May God bless the readers, lovers, doers of his word. You may be seated in his presence. Let us pray. Father, this morning we thank you for the entrance of your word uh, gives light and life, and we ask that you would speak to us and send the light. Uh, in those dark places in our minds and hearts this morning. We thank you in advance for the power that's already present in your word. Uh, we ask that it would manifest in our lives. As the seeds are sown, let them fall on good ground. We thank you, Lord, that you are binding distractions uh, that will hinder us from hearing. Uh, the grass withered, the flower faded, but your word, it will stand forever. Uh, hallelujah. Have your way here now. Open our ears, our hearts, and our minds. We can receive, know, and comprehend, and then do your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. From uh, these uh, 12 verses, I would like to uh, use for our thought, you're too comfortable in your condition. You're too comfortable in your condition. Can you help me and just say that to somebody next to you? You're too comfortable. Well, I, 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 I <laughs> let me begin this message by just making this disclaimer that uh, this is more than likely for everybody in here. Just too comfortable in our uh, condition. These happen to be the days when comfort and convenience are a priority in almost all of our lives. The very thought of being uncomfortable presents us with challenges and requires, most of the time, immediate attention. In other words, when we are uncomfortable, we try to make some changes right then. If you allow me a little time to develop this, I'm going to show you in this text, in these 12 verses, that the paralyzed man 
was too comfortable in his condition. Now, we, we're going to talk about him, but we're going to be talking about us at the same time. Are you still with me here? Uh, let, let's begin uh, this message by getting a working definition of what we mean when we say comfortable. Listen, to be comfortable is to be at a state of ease. It is to be content. It is to be satisfied. When somebody is comfortable, they are at a, they're at a state of mind or a state of, 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 of body where they are at ease, they are in contentment, and they are satisfied. When one is comfortable, they are complacent. They, they are relaxed, and they are rested. They're in a reclined position. They're, they're at a place where there is very little to disturb them. We're talking about being comfortable. It, 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 they are ready. It, you know that this person is comfortable because they are making preparations to make it easy for them. Normally, our first thought of comfort are centered around physical things. We buy our couches and our chairs, our love seats, based on comfort. We go to Muskelly's and they, they have this, this big, big selection, an array of selection of furniture that you can choose from and the first thing you want to do is, is get on it. You want, you want to stretch out on it. You want, you want to sit on it. You want to lay all across it. Broke as you is. You want to be able to see how it feels. Come on, talk to me. We, we talking about getting comfortable now. And you can get so comfortable. But when it comes down to comfort, we select our pillows. Hello, not always on the color, but we select them based on the comfort. Which one can we really stretch out on? We can really relax and ease our mind. And we base this on comfort and that. You know, Leslie, and she loves pillars. God bless her. We have a hundred on our bed. <laughs> and I'm telling you, hey amen, you just got to just throw pillars all night. I'm throwing pillars off the bed. It's too many <laughs> pillars on the bed. Am I telling the truth, sweetheart? You know, yeah. we have a hundred pillows all over the place. We even adjust our seats in our vehicles. Especially if we got a long drive, you know, we're gonna get this, we're gonna get this seat right. We're gonna get it right, you know, we're gonna be comfortable when we drive. And some of us like to lean way back. Some of us like to be right up on the steering wheel. Others like to have room elevated. They want to lift the seat up. Some of them want it down. Some of them want the heater on the seat working. Because we want to be comfortable. I was looking one day, and they, they were showing Shaq getting in this car, and he was sitting in the back seat. <laughs> Stretched out, driving in the front, because he was trying to be comfortable. Most of us, after a long, hard day of work, come home. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get out these clothes. <laughs> we're going to have to get out these work clothes. Come on. We're going to have to get on something more comfortable. Want to look at putting on them pajamas, and it's 6.30 in the evening. We put on slippers, house shoes, robe, or that old college shirt that you're too small for, you still wear. You know, you got the clothes that you only wear in the house. You ain't going nowhere else, but you will wear it in the house because you are trying to be comfortable. Praise God. You have no intentions on even going near the door that goes outside anymore. You're going to be comfortable in the house. So you take off them high heels and you 
unloosen that necktie. You take, you certainly going to unloose that belt. Because all this been held in all day. Now you want to give it some room. Stretch it out and let your belly flop around because you want to be comfortable. You know how we enjoy shopping. We go in belts. We go J.C. Penney's and go to, hey man, these beautiful places to shop. And many clothes we buy uh, are based on comfort. It is rare, and there are some exceptions to the rule, but it, it is rare that we buy stuff knowing we can't wear it. I, I, I'm just going to say it's rare. Knowing you can't wear it. They got them shoes in a size 8. That's a bad shoe. You know it's a bad shoe. They will order it for you, but you say, no, you ain't got to order it. I'm going to buy this one. Knowing you go out a nine foot, but you will squeeze and grease them feet and work with it and cripple and crunch to get that big nine in that eight. That's what's going on with somebody right now. They foot hurting up in church because you bought them shoes too small. You're the exception to the rule. But most of us, praise God, we are trying to get comfortable. We already got enough coins on our toes. We don't need no more. We're trying to get something that fits us comfortably. Be that as it may, <laughs> confident, being comfortable is what almost all of us in here seek. What we mean by this, we want to be comfortable and nothing wrong with being comfortable. In fact, we, we should be comfortable. You know, and, that, and that's why we struggle sometimes to get the atmosphere right in here. Sometimes it's too hot in the summer, too cold in the winter, then it gets hot in the winter. And, you know, we got all these different folk and their own philosophy of how the temperature should be set. And you got hot flashes, praise God, and you're dealing with folk with sinus problems and we, we just can't satisfy everybody so in every service is somebody that's uncomfortable I see you fanning right now you know that it, it may not be because you sick that could be a flash that just come on you right there <laughs> nothing wrong with being comfortable nothing wrong with wanting to be content and satisfied nothing wrong with wanting to be in a position where you can be at rest and reclining and being able to enjoy the atmosphere. But the problem can come into the picture when we start getting too comfortable. Hallelujah. When, when we start getting too comfortable, it needs to be noted that being comfortable is more than just a physical thing. Sometimes we can get too comfortable with the world. I'm going to preach up in here this morning. Please understand the Christian, we are supposed to be different from the world. And when we become too comfortable with the world, then the world has more power than we do. The Bible says that we should make a difference, come on, between what is clean and what is unclean. And what is holy and what is unholy. And when we are too comfortable with the world, we look less like Jesus and more like them. Amen. And you cannot have any power when you're just like the world. You cannot change the world when you act like the world. You cannot be the salt of the earth when you have lost your savior. You cannot be the light of the world when your light is dim or in some cases have gone completely out. Let it be known this morning up in Pilgrim Red when we get too comfortable with the world, our conversation sounds just like the world. Lord, help me up in here. We laugh at the same jokes. Come on. And we even tell the same jokes. Participate in questionable activity. And all the while, we are failing to stand up 
in a crooked and perverse generation. And you cannot change those folk if you act just like them. Lord, help me up in here. You won't be able to be a witness. It, it destroys your power to witness. It destroys your power to challenge them in their belief. And then it destroys your power to preserve what was adequately and once delivered to the saints. 1 John 2 and 15 said, love not the world. Neither the thing that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We are in the world, yes, but we are not of the world. And we must guard against being too comfortable with the world. Can I preach up in here and tell us? When we are too comfortable with the world, they don't ask you what church you go to anymore. When you're comfortable with the world, they aren't interested in anything you have to say about God because you have dismissed your own character by being too much like them. The world can infiltrate our minds so until we want the world more than we want God. I might as well go on and preach since I'm in here. Yeah, we want the world more than we want God because we are more comfortable with the world than we are with God. But in our text, the paralyzed man, the man was too comfortable. He was comfortable, comfortable, Brother Dante, he was comfortable in his condition. He, like many of us, listen, had been stuck, Deacon Brian, in his condition and situation so long till he had become complacent. This man is comfortable. Before, before we get too far, those who missed last Sunday, we are talking about the man in the story. He is a paralyzed man. The Bible says that he was sick of the palsy. The Greek word for palsy is paraludicus, which means he is unable, listen, to move. Paraludicus, brother, it says it is a loss of sensation or the power of motion. Brother Cannon, it is a loss of sensation or the power of motion or both, whether in part or in whole. Break this down so we can understand anyone who had palsy, somebody has palsy, either he or she has lost their sense of touch and they can't feel. Not only can they not feel, not only can they not touch, but they cannot move. How many of you all are out of touch this morning? Oh, I told you we headed somewhere with this thing. This man is out of touch and he cannot move. It means he cannot feel anything. And if he could feel it, he still can't do nothing about it. He has lost his touch. Nothing is able to move. In this man's case, he is out of touch. Why well, get quiet up here so fast? He is out of touch and he's comfortable. Oh, that's a dangerous place to be up in here, church. It's dangerous to be out of touch and comfortable in your situation. This man is out of touch. He can't feel anything. He can't do anything. He can't move, but he's comfortable. In his case, he has been reduced to the point where he has lost his sensation. He can't sense what's happening around him. He can't feel it. Help me say he can't feel it. And he can't move. Somebody this morning have been sitting in service and you can't feel nothing and you haven't moved. I might as well sit down. Y'all ain't ready for this. You done sat in all church. The choir done sung. Folk done prayed. 
You done been in the power of the presence of the Lord up in here, and you done sat right there, and you ain't got nothing to move you because you can't feel nothing. The only time you move is when you see somebody else move. That means you ain't really feeling anything. You are just responding to somebody else stimuli. Oh, God, help me up in here. I see right now I'm going to leave this alone. This, this man was in a bad shape. He is paralyzed. Can't feel anything spiritually. You're unable to move. You have been stalled where you are. Spirit, and it just didn't did start today. You've been like this for a long time. You, you've been coming to church like this a long time. You're stalled spiritually. You can't sense or feel the spirit and you have not moved in a year. And it's another year now. And you are just like this man. You are immobile. Lord, help me preach up in here. The man is unable to walk. I want you to think about yourself now. Think about yourself. I know we're talking about this man, but we also talking about you, the one sitting in your seat. This man is immobile. He's unable to walk. He's unable to move. He's unable to feel. He's unable to do anything. And then if he could feel, he couldn't do anything about it. The man is stuck just where he is, just like many of us. He is both, preachers hear me well, he is both unable and disabled. Somebody need to write that down. This, this man, Sister Miller, this man is both unable and disabled. He is unable because he is disabled. He is disabled because he is sick. He is sick because he has palsy and he can't do anything about. His disability, his disability was his inability. See, let, let, me, let me just stop right here because I see right now I'm going to have to teach this thing because y'all looking crazy at me. But his disability is his inability. See, some people are disabled because they are faking. You've been trying to be sick a long time since you found out they were giving check to sick folks. So all of a sudden, you just got sick right then. Huh? Ain't the Lord is all right? Ain't nothing wrong with you. You can work. But you playing like you can't. Ain't nothing wrong. If you had to get up and go, you could. Let, let somebody light a fire under your foot and see how high you jump. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You're playing. So you disabled, but you're faking. But this man was disabled because he was unable. He was unable. He couldn't do what he wanted to do because he was unable and he was disabled at the same time. And listen, because he has a disability, a real disability, the man is now bedridden. God, I wish I had time to talk about it. What time is it? Oh, could the, the, the man... It's bad when think about yourself now. Think about yourself now. The man is bad written. The man is bedridden, Brother Cannon. He's on the bed. He's in the bed. Listen, beloved. There's no way he can get up on his own. Brother Walker, he is bad written. He can't go to the bathroom. Or the restroom, for those of you who are a little savvy, he is bedridden. 
he can't get up and get nothing to eat because he's bedridden. If he gets thirsty, he can't get up and get no water. He is bedridden. He can't even turn himself over. He's bedridden. He has to stay exactly where he is. He can't do anything for himself because he's disabled. And everything he does must be done in the bed. Everything has to take place in the bed. Some of you know what it's like to take care of somebody who can't do nothing for, don't hang up on me, I'm talking up in here. Somebody know what it's like to take care of somebody who can't get out of the bed. They can't turn over. They can't do nothing. They can tell you that they're hurting, but there ain't nothing they can do about it. And they got to wait till you get up. If they wake up at five, come on, they have to wait till you get up before they can get out and move around or turn over. They can't move. They have to wait on somebody else to flip them over. So you all are familiar with this thing in nursing homes are being sued now for people having bad sores. For not being able to move. They just got to just lay there. And unless somebody out of mercy or somebody out of convenience comes along and turn them over, they'll lay right there. Come on, for a long time. Even if they urinate on themselves, they will lay in that stuff. They lay in their own feasties, lay in their own vomit, lay in their own slob, lay in just thinking, laying there, not able to do anything. And there's a sickness that can cause a scent with it, that when your body is there and unable to move, the joints are stiff and the muscles are stiffened and everything is locked up and they're just there stuck without the help of some of that's the condition of this man but that's the condition of many of us sitting up in here don't hang up on me here, I'm still going somewhere unless somebody helps him Ain't nothing that can be done. He can't get up. He most certainly can't move. He can't feel nothing. The highlight of his day is when somebody comes to his bed. Can I talk up in here? He spins his nights in the bed that's what most of us do here too there's nothing wrong with that but he also spends his days in the bed he spends holidays in the bed he celebrates birthdays in the bed all summer long he's in the bed fall winter and spring He's in the bed. He Monday through Sunday is spent in the bed. He can't work. He can't travel. He can't live alone. He's in the bed. He's in the bed so until he is a dependent on somebody. He's dependent. He's a dependent that is always dependent. God help me. We have our children as dependent, but we have a plan for their lives. They will not always, glory be to God, bless his holy name, Jesus Christ, the Lord above. They will not always be dependent. We have a plan for their lives that includes a door. I wish I had somebody to say amen up in here. But this man is a dependent that will always be a dependent. See, there's going to be some folk always that are going to need here. See, and you got to understand that everybody will not get to the point of being independent. 
there will be those that will require help all the rest of their lives. And this man, Sister Wilson, fit the profile. He depended. He's always going to be dependent. But he's now comfortable. He's so comfortable until he's used to living like this. Comfortable in his condition. So comfortable until he doesn't even have faith. Or a desire. Or even a hope of anything changing. The man is in a condition to where he's not only paralyzed in his body, he's paralyzed in his mind. Y'all better hear me. Things can work on you so much until you start thinking, I'm going to always be like this. The hope of things changing has slipped out of your mind. You know it's not going to change anymore because you, you say it's always been like this. It's not going to change. So now your hope has faded away and you don't expect anything different. You can be in something so long until you can think there is no way out of this. And yes, your condition may be dire, but don't lose your faith. The condition itself, listen, can condition you so till you have no faith of this thing ever turning around. But, Ella John, the people around him had faith. That's what it was, Brother Exodus. The man was satisfied. He's satisfied in the bed. But Jerry, he's, he, this is all he knows is bad. He's content in this condition. But the people around him had faith. It was the faith of those around him that actually changed his life. It wasn't the man. Y'all don't hear me. It wasn't the man. It was the people around him that changed him because the man would stay where he was as long as he lived. Listen, even if he had the faith, there was nothing he could do to get up. Helpless. To the point of hopeless. But the people around him had faith. Now let me show you the scripture. Let's, let's look. Open your Bibles back up. Let's look, let's look at this. Look at this again. Mark 2. You read it before. But I want you to see it with your own eye. Uh, and look at Mark 2. And look at verse 3. The Bible says in verse 3. That they come unto him. The him in this part is Jesus. And the day is unknown bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. So we got four men carrying one man to Jesus. We got four men carrying the one who is paralyzed, the one who is conditioned, the one who is satisfied, the one who is comfortable. We got four men carrying one to Jesus. You see the word they in verse 3. Verse 4, and when they could not come nigh unto Jesus for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let the bed, let the bed down wherein the sick of the palsy, where Jesus saw their faith. They, in verse 3, they in verse 4, they in verse 4, they in verse 4, they again in verse 4, in verse 5, he saw their faith. Who is the there? The there is the they. It ain't the man in the bed. It is the one who is carrying him. 
Lord, I'm going to tell y'all the truth up in here this morning. It's not the man that's sick in the bed that's got faith. In fact, we don't even get to his condition to verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he talked to the sick man then and said, Son, your sins are forgiven. What is this sin? Lord, can I tell y'all something? What kind of sin can the man do paralyzed? You know he can't do no fornication paralyzed. Don't hang up on me up in here. The man seeing here, his mind has shut off God. And you believe this or not, you can do more sin in your mind than you can do in your body. And the man was laying up in there sinning in his mind. We're talking to you here today. Reverend, I ain't doing nothing, man. I ain't did nothing, but what about your mind? What's going on in your mind? Hello? Are y'all still with me here? Wake up your neighbor and say good morning. Glad you finally woke up here. He's almost finished. But the man has been sinning. Ella John, the man has been sinning in his mind, in his bed. I don't have to go to free lunch. I ain't never got to drink it. I ain't never got to smoke it. Don't hang up on me here now. Jesus said, if you think it in your mind, if you desire it in your mind, you ain't never got to touch another woman or touch another man. But if you think it in your mind, you have already done it in your mind. And when sister so-and-so walked by, your mind said, good God, in the morning. Or when that husband walked by, somebody else's husband walked by, you saying, I wish he was mine. You just seeing in your mind. You ain't did nothing. They can't put DNA on that. But your mind has already done that. The man was sitting in his mind. I got the clothes y'all. They. They had faith. They had faith the one around him had faith he didn't why because he was comfortable in his condition he was satisfied in his condition now now I, I, I submit this morning that somebody that was in the they I, I can't prove this Ella Adams but through inductive Bible study you have to draw conclusions that reach from the text and I believe that somebody who was a part of the four had a job of taking care of this fellow It, 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 it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty safe to conclude that at least one of the folks that's carrying him is primarily responsible for him. Their life is linked to his. It could have been his father. Could have been an older brother. Somebody who has the responsibility of taking care of the paralyzed. 
passed on. This responsibility could have been passed on. Maybe the mama died. Maybe the dad died. And now the older son has got to take care of his brother. Don't hang up on me here now. I could be the, the, the son, the, the, uh, uh, a brother-in-law who's married to his sister who's got to take care of this guy. They got faith. And they have so much faith that they say, you know what, I heard that Jesus, in fact, the scripture said that it was noise abroad. We read it there in verse 1. It was noise that Jesus was in the house. In Capernaum, he's in Peter's house. In Capernaum, the word is out. The man said, hey, hey, y'all, guess I heard Jesus is down at this house, at Peter's house by the Galilee Sea. In Capernaum, if we can get him up. I can't do it by myself. I, 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 I can't take it by myself. But if I could get, if I can get, get some help to get him to the house where Jesus said, then maybe we ain't going to lose nothing if we could just at least try. Let me ask you this question. If you had to get somebody to Jesus, what three people could you call right now? came to your mind if you had to get somebody to Jesus well, just, it don't have to be nobody we'll just say you had to get your situation to Jesus what three people do you know right now would help you to get it to Jesus if your mind went to somebody in the world we got a problem we got a problem. We got a big problem because the world should not be the ones taking somebody to Jesus. Who are your friends? You know he gonna call his three best buddies. Who would you call? Who could you call? Can I use this illustration? I, I, that's because I see right now, and I lost half of y'all. But come up, bring this offering table out there for me, brother. Set this out there for me. I want to just illustrate this to you. And, and, and I'm going to close on this. We got to get the man to Jesus. Come on up here, Brother Robbie. I'm going to use Robbie because it's good to see him in church. Good to see him. Can you help me out this morning? I want you to lay out on this table. Just lay out on the table. Come here, Robert. Come here, Robert. Come on, brother. That's his daddy. Come on here. Let's give Brother A.G. a hand. Faithful man. Dedicated man. Love you, brother. Come on, help me out, brother. Do you mind helping me? Come on, help me. You got to stretch on out, but you got to get comfortable. Slide on back. There you go. I want your head hanging up. There you go. Now, he good. This man trying to get his son to Jesus. Who you gonna call, brother Robert? Give me a name. I'm gonna call my son. Well, he need help. All right, you got me up here. I can't do it. I can't help you, Robert. I can't help you. I mean, you know I love you, but I just can't help you. Who else you gonna call? I'm gonna call Jesus. <laughs> no, but you gotta get somebody to help you. Who else you gonna call? Uh, I get Brother John. Brother John? John got a bad shoulder. Man, you know I would help you. Come on, tell him. I would help. I would help you. 
but 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 my shoulder. Uh, my shoulder rotator cuff. It, it rotator cuff. Uh, George, George Taylor. <laughs> but George Taylor, where's George Taylor? At? George, can you help him? You got a bad back. <laughs> I can't help you, Robert. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Do you understand where I'm headed with this thing? When we start trying to get somebody to help us, you know I would, but you said George Taylor. Who else you gonna call? I'm gonna call Dick and Ivy. Oh no, he's too old. He can't do nothing. <laughs> you know he can't help nobody. You gonna try to help him? But he was coming. You coming? Okay, he said, yeah, you got on him. He got, you got one. You got one. You going to get Brother Palmer? You know, Brother Palmer ain't got nothing, man. He can't pick up nothing. But he, you call him Brother Joe. Brother Joe, can you, can you pick up something? <laughs> you sure? You sure you can help I can help I, I thought you had surgery. You, you able to pick up something? I'm able. Are you able? All right, well, we're getting rough now, Robert. We got two. We got two. Ella John. Ella John. He got it. Well, you know we can count on Ella John, can't we? <laughs> Come on, Ella John. Do you have an excuse? <laughs> you want me to give you one? <laughs> Who else you got, Rob? I'm going to get Brother McCray. Brother, Brother McCray, but Jerry. You going to count on Jerry? Jerry, you going to be able to help him? You know you kind of sick. You been sick? You ready? Can you handle it? All right, now y'all, can y are y'all sure y'all can do this? Now, let the reason I'm asking is now, because they got to pick him up. You got to get him up first, and you got to carry him. To somebody else's house. Robert picked some folk that. All right. All right. All right. You, you can't. You, you, you don't need but four. Who, who else you going to try to get? You going to try one more? John Henry? Wallace Willis. Wallace Willis has been called from the back. He got a bad, he got a bad wrist. He said he can't do nothing. He said, "Don't call me. I'll call you." Well, Robert, this is where we got. Unless you want to try somebody else, John Henry, or brother, the brother, okay, the brother here. Come on, brother William. Brother William got a bad back. You can't count on him. He gonna try. Uh, all right, okay. All right, are y'all ready? Wait a minute now. Hold up now. We ain't, we ain't even spread out evenly here yet. They got him, Robert. They got him. They got him. Isn't this wonderful? Can, can y'all take him down the back of the dead bound the aisle and come back up with him? Come on, Ellis, I need y'all to get around here and block this right here now. Look at these men taking Robert's son. Robert, you supposed to be with them. You done left. We know you can't do nothing. You, 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 you sick yourself. Robert, you all right? You all right, Robert? It look like y'all struggling. The man about to fall. They got him. They got him. All right, we, done make, we making it to the house, but guess what? You got folk in the way. <laughs> Hold on. That's what we talk about there. <laughs> you got to do what it takes to get to Jesus. This is what we're talking about, folks. Who can you call this morning? If this was you, 
if this was your child and you needed help with him, I'm doing all I know to do. But I can't do this by myself. Can you call on somebody? I'm going to stop. Y'all standing to your feet. I'm going to cut it off here today. But I just believe this message has hit home here today. There's somebody. Somebody. You're too comfortable. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Thank all you brothers. You're too comfortable in your condition. I'm going to pray with you now. That the Lord will shake you up and stir you up. But you say, I can't stay like this the rest of my life. I got to do better than this. I got to get up from here. And I need help to help me to get up. I need help to help me to get to Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father in heaven, we pray now for all of us that are just like the man. We've been down so long. Don't look like we're going to ever get up. Put people around us that have enough faith to say we're not going to just let you live like this. God got something better for us. Not just for you, but for us together. You can get above this. You can make it. I pray today that the spirit of encouragement would break out in our midst. That we would find others to encourage. That we would find others whose situation has paralyzed them. And speak a word in season to them. In the name of Jesus. We bind every condition that's holding us back from prospering. We bind every situation that's had us incarcerated, bedridden, limited, unable to go forward. This year, we break that spirit over us. We break the spirit of poverty. We break the spirit of depression. We break the spirit of discouragement and we speak life into the people of God. And now, Lord, go with us and stand by us and keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. You dismiss. God bless you and I love you. Encourage somebody on your way out the door and tell them to hang on in there.